What's up everybody? Pete with Auto Repair Tips. We are walking on the What's up everybody? Pete with Auto Repair Tips. We're working on the 2000 and we're work <clears throat> Shit. What's up everybody? Pete with Auto Repair Tips. We're working on a 2000 Hyundai SUV, a little Tuscan or Tucson or Toucan or whatever the heck you call it. And the customer's complaint is no AC. So let's start this thing up. Let's crank up some AC and let's see what happens. Max AC, AC's on, max AC, we're in cold and not a, and there's definitely no AC action going on. Let's go ahead and look at the compressor. So just at a quick glance, I can see the compressor's not on and the fans aren't on. So let's take a second, let's hook up the gauges to it and let's see if we even have any Freon in this car. So when you're hooking up the gauges, it's like I showed you before, High side's the bigger side. You cannot mess it up. All right, let's see if there's any Freon in this car. Just at a quick glance, you can see there's no Freon in the car. If there was Freon in the car, this would be up around 30. This would be somewhere in today, probably 250. So both high and low sides are definitely low. So I'm gonna cut the car off, pull a vacuum on it, and do a leak test. So we're going to select vacuum, hit enter. We're not doing an oil change. It's checking the pressures. We'll do about a 10 minute vacuum on it and we will do a leak test. All right, see you guys in about 15 minutes. So after about 15 minutes, the gauges look good. It passed the test. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some Freon in it, get my sniffer out and let's sniff this thing and see can we find any small leaks with it running. I'm gonna charge it. We're gonna go with 20, it says 25 kgs. Hit okay. Means the car is off. I'm gonna fill it through both sides because the car is off. If the car was running, I would put it just through the low side. All right, we got about 22 kgs in it. Gauges look good so far. All right, we'll hit done. So it's filled correctly. You're about 90 over here, you're about 100 over here. So when I start this up, this should drop down to about 30, give or take. This is gonna pop up to about 200 or 250 on a day like today, cause it is definitely hot as shit out. Got the AC on, it's on max mode, it's on cold, and we're on recycle. So let's see what the readings are doing. It's obvious we have a bad compressor. The pump is turning, the fans are on, we have the right amount of Freon, but we're sitting at about 50 on the low side, and that should be about 30. So that compressor is definitely not doing his job. Let me call the customer and see what he wants to do. Catch you in a bit. To get that compressor off, first thing we gotta do is take that belt off. Need to loosen up one right here. That's a 14 and there's two 12s. Loosen this one here and this is the one that takes the tension off the belt. To get this compressor out, it's gotta go out through the bottom. So that puts the skill level at about, about a three. So make sure if you do it at home, use caution, always use jack stands. All right, let's get it up in the air. All right, your compressor's located right here. To get to it, I'm gonna remove that lower splash shield. About three 12s and some push clips hold it on. But check this out. When I was looking at the compressor, if you look right here, this line, the suction line, it's like, it's collapsed a little bit. And that'll also cause a restriction and cause that pump not to pump correctly. But if it's been like that for a while, it's probably damaged the pump. So we're gonna recommend replacing this line and this compressor. There are three bolts that hold the compressor on and they are 12s. All to get the top bolt on the compressor, just go through the hole right here, beside side of the condenser.
All right, the last bolt is right here, and you can use your electric ratchet or whatever you got. And then just reach your hand up in there and take it loose. Got one electrical connector you gotta push and pull off. After you pull that connector off, you're able to move this compressor down a little bit and get those lines off a little bit easier. This is the line that we're going to be replacing here, and this thing goes all up through the top. All right, we got two twills. Come on, man. Good God Almighty. This is the line I'm replacing. It goes up and splits off like three ways. There's a 10 millimeter bolt right here for a bracket we gotta get off first. So this line, it's got one sensor on it, and then it wraps around here, goes to the front of the car, comes up. The side here on the frame rail goes all the way to the back of the car to the expansion valve. So this ought to be fun. So I'm hoping to get to that line just by taking this cover off. Tell you what, that's the best tool kit I ever bought. Got it off of Amazon. Literally, Snap-on had this kit. I don't know, they wanted something like three or four hundred dollars for it. Got it off of Amazon for like 15 bucks. So, and literally, this is the kit. This whole kit was like, say, under $20 or $22. Tell you what, I'm putting a link in the description below. So if you're looking for a kit like this, you can check it out. If you purchase anything through that link, a small portion goes to help the channel and I appreciate it. Back to work. Looks like we have a couple of eights also. Hoping I can just pull it back and reach it, but that's not gonna happen. No, I might be able to get to it. Hopefully I can get to it without having to take any more off. Look right down here. That's the line I'm trying to get off and that's the nut I'm trying to get to. I'm hoping I can just do it like this and get to it this way, just by holding it back a little bit. All right, it's a 10, and maybe I got lucky. All right, should just pop up just like that. There's one more bracket just below the low side fitting, right here. Next thing to do is go ahead and get it off the expansion valve, and it should come right out. And I said it should come right out. Get this cover out of the way. All right, see this right here? This is your expansion valve, and without replacing this, there is no warranty on that compressor. It's located right up against the evaporator. She's loose everywhere. We just need to get it out now. Now I gotta remember how to put the bitch back. So after about three days, we got our second compressor in. Got the first compressor in and opened it up out of the box. And sure enough, believe it or not, it was used. They sent me a compressor that was defective. Already been in someone's car. I called the dealer up and I told the guy, I said, you gotta be kidding me. He said, no. He said, sometimes that happens. I said, that's bullshit. But anyway, beside the point. He sent me another one out, and this one looks good. This is the line that we were talking about earlier that I was talking about that need to be replaced because 
I think it was this part right here was sucking closed. So I'm gonna pull it out right quick and we're gonna look at it and compare it to the other line. I can already look at the shape of this one here and see it's definitely rounder. So I'm not sure how well you can see this on camera, but this line, it's egg shaped right here in the middle. This is round, this is, and the tension on it is, watch this. I'm squeezing hard and it's barely moving. Watch this one, squeeze it, barely pushing, it sucks all the way down. So this line was definitely weak in the middle, causing some issues. All right, let's get them on the car. So the new line came with a new sensor and expansion valve. So let's go ahead and take the old one off so it's not in our way when I'm putting this new line in. The expansion valve is held on with 10 millimeters. I'm gonna break them loose with a ratchet. Just be careful doing it. When you go to take those bolts out, you'll twist the evaporator and you can crack it and that'll cause a leak. And then you have to replace an evaporator. So you don't wanna do that. So just be really cautious when doing this. Once you break them loose, If you have an electric ratchet, it's a lot quicker to get them off. That's what they look like. They're pretty long bolts. There's two O-rings that go between the expansion valve and the evaporator. Make sure you replace those. They do not come in this kit. You just gotta keep playing with it till you get it in the right spot. We'll find the sweet spot that it goes in and then get it on through. I hate these glasses. I hate them with a passion. The lady that sold me these glasses says, that would be the best glasses you ever own. She's a flipping liar. Yay. Got my freaking arm stuck. Yeah. All right, we just about got it. We got to put those two bracket bolts on, and then we're gonna go ahead and find some O-rings for that expansion valve. Take these O-rings and we'll match them up. So after you get your new O-rings put on, take a little bit of oil, 134 oil. Just put a dab on your finger and just put it around the O-ring. It'll help that expansion valve seat better on there. All right, after you get the brackets tight, let's go ahead and secure that line to the condenser. You're gonna to wanna to use a hand ratchet on this, not an electric one, because once you get it tight, if you over torque it, you'll twist and crack that condenser. I'm gonna leave this loose, so after we evacuate it and charge it, I can check it for leaks. It's just a lot easier to access this way. After you get that done, we can go ahead and get it up in the air and get that new compressor on. The compressor, when they ship it, it's dry, there's no fluid in it at all. According to the specs, it takes 0.35 ounces, and I've already measured that out. Make sure you check that you go to do it because you do not want to start your compressor dry. Rotate it one time like this, sucks it right on down. All right, let's get it on the car. If you can remember when I was doing this, it was a lot easier to put the lines on and then put it in place. All right, now that we got the compressor bolted up and the line secure, let's go ahead and get the belt on. I'm gonna leave the splash shield hanging so I can check for any leaks. We'll pull it down and fill it with some Freon. Being this system has been open for so long, I'm gonna do a 30 minute vacuum on it. That'll guarantee any moisture that is in there will be out of the system. So we're gonna go down to auto sequence. No, there's nothing in there. Yes, I'll be pulling the vacuum. We don't need to oil charge it. I already put oil in the lines and the compressor. We're gonna adjust this to 30. I'm gonna hit okay. We're gonna do a leak test. Will you be charging with this sequence? Yes. The disc is messed up, so I have to manually put in how much Freon to go every time. And like before, it was 25 kgs. I'm gonna hit okay. Here's a pro tip for you. If your car's running, you can only fill from the low side. 
if it's off, you can put Freon in on the high and low side. So my car is not running, we're gonna go with both. So that was a good sign. It went all the way down to zero, just like that. If you hook your gate, if you hook your vacuum pump to it and it doesn't go down to zero that fast, but it kind of lingers up a little bit around the 10 to 15 mark, you've got a leak somewhere. It should go down to zero, depending on your pump, within about 15 to 30 seconds. Beyond that, if it's staying way up here, you've got a leak somewhere. So I think we're gonna be okay, but we'll know in 28 minutes and 44 seconds. So after the vacuum was pulled, it did a leak test, it passed, and then it filled it with Freon. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the car, and what I'm looking for is a low side to be somewhere around 30, and the high side to be somewhere between 175 and 275. The car is running, and we do not have anything. And the reason is, my dumbass forgot to plug the compressor in. The most important step. Now that I got the compressor plugged in, need to add just a little bit more Freon. Go to charge, I'm gonna hit enter. Looking good though, so far. Now that the car's running, I gotta put it in on the low side. We don't want 90. Gonna put, go with 10, low side. I can live with that, because when I rev the engine up, that's gonna drop down a little bit more. And this is sitting, we're almost at 200, so we're really, really good. Let's go see how cold it's blowing. All right, so now that we got everything working correctly, let's check and see how cold this thing gets. We are at, 53, 46, I'd like to see 41. I guess on a hot day like today, I'd take 43. Come on, baby, get to 41. 40, all right, not bad. We'll level off at about 41 degrees. So it leveled off between 41 and 42 degrees. You're not gonna get much colder than that. So that's it for this video. I appreciate you watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Catch you later.